This video was on finding the stresses on an inclined plane. What I did here, I have in just a basic element and I have general plane stresses applied. I have normal stresses being applied here and here. I have shear stresses being applied around this element. What I want to do is I've just split it right down the middle. I've created an angle called theta. And what I want to do is I'm going to compute the stresses along um, along this line. Now, what I recommend here, and I've highlighted this, would be what sign convention to use. F on normal stresses, for tensile stresses, I consider those positive. Compressive stresses, I consider those neg negative. For shear stresses, shear stresses are considered positive when the shear stress on the opposite side of the element form a counterclockwise moment. I mean counterclockwise like this. And then the signs for the angle of inclination, I've taken all the angles off the vertical. If you go counterclockwise, it's going to be positive here. All right, so now I've already had most of this written out, but what I want to do is I'm going to look at this element right through here. And I'll scroll down to do that. So I have my element right here. And I've, I've created a normal coming off of that surface going this way, which I call x prime. A parallel coming off this way, which I call y prime. Now, I've also created a little axis around each of these just to, so it's going to make it easier to know whether to use the sine or cosine. Now, the thing to remember is when we do normal stresses that we know that a normal stress is nothing but P over A or F over A. So on here, <coughs> excuse me, I'm going to solve for F. So I could say F is going to equal to the normal stress times area, which I have right here. Now we can do the same thing with shear. We know shear is going to be the force divided over the area. Or we can solve for F and we get F is equal to the shear stress times area. So I'll call that in red. So that's important to note. All right, now, since we know that force is going to be the normal times area and the shear times area, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to saw, sum up all the forces along this axis here. All right, to do that, I have this normal stress here, which I have this area is defined as the area across this face. So I'll take this value here times this area, which I did right here, and I have that going this way, so we're going to make anything that goes this way be positive. Now I'm going to jump back to this one. Now the area here is not just A. The area here is going to be this A times the cosine of this, this angle here that's going to give me this. So my force is going to be nothing more than this normal stress times A times the cosine of theta, which I have right here. That's going to be the force. However, my force is coming out in this direction. I need to come this way along this axis because again I'm solving the forces parallel to here. So I take this value and multiply by the cosine of theta which I do here. <clears throat> okay, now we're jump down to normal y. Basically do the same thing here. Now we know that this area here is going to be the area across here times the sine of this to get my opposite. So that's going to be area sine theta. We go ahead and multiply it by the normal stress at y. That creates my force crossed here. But again, the force is coming here. We need it to go here. So I'm going to take this force, multiply it by the sine of this angle here, which is going to get the force going back along this axis here, which I do right here. All right, so now we're going to start talking about the shear. I have this shear across this face here. So I take this shear times this area here, which we said was A sine theta, which I did here and here. That gives me my force. My force is coming this way. I'll multiply that by the cosine of this angle to get the force coming back this way, which I did here. So now we got, let's cover these in blue. We have this one done, this one, this one, and we have this one. We only have one more to go on that being this one. So I take this shear stress. I'm going to multiply it by A times the cosine of theta, which I do here and here. Then again, I need it to orient orient it along this axis, so I'll multiply it by the sine of this theta, which I do here. And again, as always, we're just going to set that equal to zero. All right, so now what I'm going to do is just simplify it a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and multiply the cosine thetas together and the sine thetas together, 
when I do that, I'm going to get this normal stress times this area times the normal on X of X times A times the cosine squared theta times the normal Y times A times sine squared theta minus A times the sine theta cosine theta and here I got uh, two of the shears so I just pull those out and again we can add those together. Now you do notice everything here has A so I might as well just cancel out the A. A is going to be irrelevant because we're setting this equal to zero anyway. So basically all I'm doing is dividing everything by A. My A's will cancel out here, 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 and here. So the area's all gone. And again, let's make sure we set that equal to zero. So now I'm going to solve for this normal stress. So I'm going to take all this that I have here and move it to the other side which is going to make it positive and I rewrote it here. Now this gets a little bit unique. Um, you're going to have to go back to three identities from trigonometry and we know that the cosine squared theta can be written as one half times one plus the cosine of two theta and the sine squared of theta um, can be written as one half times one minus the cosine of two theta and the sine theta cosine theta can be written as one half sine two theta. Again if you don't remember those you can look those up. Substitute back in here for cosine, here for sine, and here right here into this and I did that right here below and wrote it as, as, um, as stated went ahead and distributed this and if you do that now I get theta x I'm th sorry theta s normal stress at x over 2 plus normal stress at x over 2 times the cosine of theta so I just distribute this and I've basically done the same thing here now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the normal x2 and the normal y2 together which I did here I bring this one and this one together which I did here times the cosine 2 theta is my greatest common pull it out plus my shear stress times the sine of 2 theta. Alright, so now I have this equation here. Now, these equations, these are both very useful equations. And I'll just talk primarily on this one. This equation here can be used to find the normal on any inclined plane when you know the, when you're given the angle. So this one's going to be very valuable. Now, the second equation I didn't go through all the mathematics, but just talk. I'll go back and talk about how I would do that. Is all I would do would be find the summation of forces along the y prime axis. Is what I did. What I would do, and instead of going through all the mathematics, what you end up getting is this equation here, and this is going to let you find the shear stress along any angle. Or excuse me, along any inclined plane, as long as you know what the angle is. So both of these equations are going to be very useful. So again, this is the um, the proof or how to uh, f develop the two equations for normal stress and shear stress along an inclined plane.